Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, the place for techies and non-techies who work in the techie world whose work-life balance plan has imploded. We're here to provide solutions that will help both the techie and non-techie live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here's your host, Joanne Victoria. Hi, welcome to the show. This is another great episode of the Sanity Project Podcast, and I'm your host, Joanne Victoria, the I Know What Works Coach. Our guest today is Dr. John McGrail. Dr. McGrail is a renowned hypnotherapist, self-improvement expert, and spirituality teacher. His expertise has been featured in many major print and online publications, including Time, Reader's Digest, U.S. News and World Report, Cosmopolitan, Red Book, Self, The Chicago Tribune, New York Daily News, WebMD, Huffington Post, and many more. He frequently appears on TV and radio programs nationwide and abroad. His book, The Synthesis Effect, has garnered rave reviews. You can reach him at drjohnmcgrail.com, and you can see it on the uh, website page that he has on my website, uh, askjoannevictoria.com. Today, Dr. McGrail is going to help us understand how difficult it is to make personal changes on our own due to how the human mind develops and functions. He's going to give us some tips and tools, how to get around that inborn resistance. Welcome to the show, Dr. McGrail. Thank you so much, Joanne. It's a delight to be with you this morning. I really appreciate it. I am so glad that you are here because your topic is, I think, vital because people who think they want to change don't really know how. Right. Well, and that's so very, very common. Most of us, well, not even most of us, all of us at some time or another have what I call stuff in our lives that, you know, issues that are just keeping us from living as fully as we would like to and deserve to. And it gets very discouraging because even though you may know you want to make a change in your life and you know it would be good for you and healthier for you and you'd be happier and more joyful and be more abundant, whatever it is, you try to do it on your own through sheer conscious willpower and almost everyone fails at that at some point. You may be able to push the envelope for a while, but then eventually you kind of slip back into whatever it was that was holding you back to begin with. And the greatest example of that, of course, which has become sort of a joke now, is New Year's resolutions. The truth of the matter is, New Year's is a great time to think about changing things in your life. It's a, it's a fresh start. It's like a rebirth. And so we make these resolutions. We keep them for about a week or two, maybe a month, and then, boink, we're right back where we started from. And that is so typical, and it's so discouraging. Well, I think people's mindset is made up. Willpower does not work. I don't know why people don't get that yet because they've tried to stop eating, stop drinking, stop smoking, and start exercising and doing those things. But why doesn't willpower work? Why don't we answer that question to our audience first? Sure. Well, the, the simple answer is to think of, this, as, we, as you mentioned in the introduction, the structure of the human mind. What most people don't realize, because we are so involved with using the conscious, logical, cognitive part of our mind, the part of our mind that allowed us along with our opposable thumbs, to take over the planet. That only represents about 10% of the total mass or volume or power of the average human mind. 90% of our mind is what we call the subconscious. It's operating below our conscious awareness. And that is where we find the basis of our attitudes, our values, our beliefs, our personality, and usually, almost always, the fears, phobias, whatever the limiting beliefs are that are holding us back. And so if you think about willpower being a conscious energy, if you will, and the subconscious mind being nine nine times more powerful, think of a tug of war. You want to make a change. It's very positive. That's 10 guys pulling on the rope. Your subconscious programming, if you will, the patterns that you want to get over are 90 guys pulling on the rope. And Mm -hmm. if you think of a tug of war, how long can 10 guys hold off 90 guys? And can 10 guys ever pull the 90 guys across? Probably not. And that's the easiest metaphorical way to understand it. The subconscious mind not only is much more powerful than the conscious mind, it's also got the sophistication of a three-year-old child that never grows up. And it works, metaphorically speaking, very much like a computer. 
wants its program, like any computer, it will play its programs over and over and over. And the more it plays the programs, the more ingrained they get, uh, the more entrenched they get, the harder it is to untrench them or change the behavior. And again, 10 versus 90 very rarely works. I got that. The numbers are startling. And uh, I know how the subconscious mind works, of course, to a degree, because uh, I, hopefully a lot of our listeners are aware as well. But this is some um, you know, great insight that it's not sophisticated. I, I didn't even think of that word. Yes, it's really interesting. You know, the, 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 first of all, we evaluate our life experience in terms of one very simple concept, contrast. Everything is, is rated. Everything that we think, do, say, and feel. Good, bad, happy, sad, pain, pleasure, love, hate. All the way up to whole philosophies, yin and yang, contrast. But that contrast, that evaluatory mechanism, lives in the conscious mind. The subconscious mind understands contrast. It understands negative inputs and positive inputs. But like a computer, a mechanical computer will take a zero or a one, which is all they do, the subconscious mind or computer will equally take a negative input or a positive input. You, and it's like a three-year-old child. So think of this. You could teach a three-year-old two plus two is five. And if you reinforce that enough, he or she will believe you. And you can teach that same three-year-old two plus two is four. And he or she will believe you. And with repetition, that becomes reality. Well, if you learn two plus two is five and that's your reality, you're not going to be a very happy camper. And that's exactly what happens. So... It can't tell the difference between good or bad or happy or sad. All the subconscious mind knows is the inputs it gets. It will take either negative inputs or positive inputs. These ha this programming happens very early in life, but that's what sets us up for the issues we have later on. Wow. Okay. That's really clear. Um, I mean, that's how a lot of people are trained. That's why you want to get them when they're young. Yes, most of it occurs. Most of our internal behavioral programming, if you will, and I hate to use that word because people don't like to think of themselves as computers, but it's so very apt. That inputting, that imprinting, which is what behavioral scientists call it, happens mostly in the first eight years of life. By the time we're eight years old, we are pretty much wired for the adults we're going to be. And actually, this is even scarier, especially for new parents that I work with, the first four years are the most important. A lot of behavioral scientists say it's really ages zero to four where almost all of it happens, but zero to eight is sort of the accepted range. So once you're eight, you're pretty much wired for who you're going to be. And again, we are taught so often by well-meaning but very often misinformed people that we're not good enough, we're not this enough. Why did, couldn't you do better on that test? Why couldn't you get a B? Why can't you be more like your brother? What's the matter with you? Well, that gets in there, and it becomes a behavioral program, and that holds us back later on. Well, that sound, those words sound familiar to me. And, <laughs> and to and most of us. I know. <laughs> I used to tell people, by seven, it's over. You know, don't worry when they're 14 or 15. It's done. They're done. Right. It's going to take a lot of work to change their minds. So how can you... How do they make this change? How can you help people make this change um, to get around that inborn resistance? Well, first of all, again, the inborn resistance, another word for it is called homeostasis, which is Latin for the same state, comes originally from the Greek. And, you, you know, it is just hardwired into our DNA now after many thousands of years of development that we will cling to the familiar. So how do we make the change when it's subconsciously generated? We're not doing these things on purpose. We don't think that we're less than or unworthy or uh, fearing getting on the highway. We don't do it on purpose. It happens automatically. So to make the change and to make it stick starts with a conscious desire and a willing to commit to yourself. That's, that's very, very key. You have to want it and you have to realize that changing, you didn't get this way overnight and you're not going to change it overnight. It is a process. And in some form or another, you have to address the subconscious patterns that are creating these negative responses, reactions, or choices. And, you know, if I don't mind sounding immodest for a second, uh, modalities like hypnotherapy and cognitive behavioral therapy, although cognitive behavioral therapy works at a conscious level, work at a much deeper level for most people. And if you get that assistance, and you're probably going to need assistance, then it's amazing how quickly we can make these changes. It's astounding. The mind is very flexible. 
And it, with the right assistance, people can end years of negative behaviors or beliefs in a matter of weeks, literally. I remember when um, years ago when I was trying, and I say that, uh, trying to qu uh, quit smoking. Mm -hmm. I, I had smoked for a couple of decades. Nobody even knew that I smoked, but I know I needed to stop. And I used my quote unquote willpower and that only worked temporarily. And I went to one session at a hypnotherapist who specialized in this because I think that's what was going on at the time where I lived. People wanted to stop smoking. And um, then I replayed the tape over and over again and so on because that's the way it was. And I quit smoking in one session with the hypnotherapist. Yes. Uh, my, my smoking cessation program is also one session. I actually offer a lifetime guarantee to my clients. And I've worked with well over a thousand smokers over the last 16 years. And the success rate is somewhere between 95 and 98%. Because... With smoking, that's a great example, by the way. I, too, am a former smoker. Mm -hmm. It really isn't the nicotine addiction that keeps us hooked, and that's what the drug companies would love us to think. Chew the gum, take the pill, and you're good to go. Right. It's the emotional and behavioral addiction because smoking, like other habits of that nature, weaves its way into the very fabric of our lives. We're stressed, we smoke. We're happy, we smoke. We have a cocktail, we smoke. We drive the car, we smoke. We talk on the phone, we smoke. So it becomes part of our everyday behavior and it gets so ingrained and so automatic that if you don't and when i say automatic i mean subconscious yes ask a, ask a person why do you reach into the pack of cigarettes when do you know it's time and they say i don't know i just do it it's automatic so you have to work at that level and when you do it correctly with someone that knows what they're doing as you said one session my program is one session 98 percent success rate it's pretty good yeah, I, I was impressed. That was my, I don't think I've been to, a, I might have done hypnotherapy for something else, but I can't remember. But obviously for me with the cigarettes, it was, you know, a groundbreaking thing for me. And to this day, I cannot even stand the smell of them. Um, it's just gotten worse over time. And people don't smoke as much as they used to. So that's not that big of a deal. But it is really interesting how it worked in one session. So people have to, to, I'm saying that as a way of communicating to you and our audience, but also to let them know that hypnotherapy does work. Um, it really does, yes. I mean, it really does work. And if you could take care of that in a few sessions or several sessions over a period of time, it's a lot easier than having to go through therapy once a week for the rest of your life or, you know, cognitive therapy. In my opinion, that's just my opinion. Well, I'm not going to disagree with you, Joanne. Actually, um, I work with so many clients. And, and the truth of the matter is uh, smoking is the exception rather than the rule as far as a one and done. Most require some number of sessions. But again, just to reiterate what I said a little earlier, it's usually a matter of weeks, not months and years. And I've had so many clients over the years, uh, and, and I'm not... Um, in any way trying to denigrate conventional therapy. It's, it's a great modality for many, many people, but I've had so many clients come in and say, you know what, I've been in therapy for years, and in a few weeks, my whole life has changed around. Um, and that's just the basis. It's not necessarily uh, tooting my horn, but it is tooting the horn of this process because it is, it is and can be extremely effective for physical issues, emotional issues, and even spiritual issues. And um, that's well, one of the reasons I chose it when I was chosen to do this work. Well, any, any of the people that are close to me that I know who are participating in cognitive therapy don't seem to move forward at all. And some of them have been involved in this for a minimum of a year up to five years. And I would think that, you know, you could get an MBA in five years. So uh, I think, and it seems to me as though there should be some progress, some leaps, some changes that could occur within people with, for over a five-year period, even one year. I've not seen anybody change their habits, their patterns, because they still have that resistance. They want to be right. And that's, this is, so how, do, how do, can you help our listeners get over that? You know, how can we get around that inborn resistance, their subconscious holding on well, you know, there's something interesting. When I start working with a new client, very often before they even come in for their first session, because I do screen all my potential clients to make sure that it's a good fit for them and a good fit for me because I don't want to waste their time 
or mine for that matter. I can only see so many people a week. But one of the things I've seen over the years, and, and I've been doing this for many years now, is that most people that have these issues that feel they're stuck, this is as good as it gets. And they think because they have tried and been unable to make the changes on their own, they think there's something wrong with them. And so many people, believe it or not, think that they're the only ones with the problem. So that's an enormous uh, uh, addition to the inborn resistance. So the first thing I do when I talk to somebody, I say, first of all, there's nothing wrong with you. The reason you're stuck is just because of the way your mind works. And I'll show you how when you come in, I'll show you exactly how you got this way. And what this process called homeostasis or what I call the critical filter is, it's the part of the mind that evaluates inputs and checks the database. If an input, a suggestion, like I'm going to quit smoking just to use something that we're already on, um, it sounds great in the cognitive mind. Oh, yeah, good idea. I'm going to be healthier. I'm going to save a ton of money. I'm going to live longer. There's no downside to quitting smoking. But when the critical filter, which is, if you could imagine, a, a band that lies between the conscious and the subconscious mind, it goes down into that little band of... Um, uh, functionality and the critical filter says let's check the programming on this to see how we're supposed to respond to this input I want to quit smoking and of course what it sees is this addictive behavior that you've been doing for it doesn't take very long to get hooked on cigarettes mm -hmm. oh no this does not compute boom so when you explain that to somebody and they realize that hey it's not my fault that I can't make this change it's because of the way our mind works our mind not just mine humanity's mind we're all resistant to change at some level or another hey and if i get the right help i can undo this and that literally you know opens the floodgates and so many people will come to me with one issue cigarette smoking is not as popular as it was i used to have a lot of clients every year maybe up to a hundred now i have maybe 20 a year but then they get rid of that and they say hey wait i wonder if i could do this and then they're off to the races so it's simply realizing that it is possible and it's probably going to take some assistance. And, and, when, you, and when you get the, the assistance and you, as you, you actually start feeling these changes occurring, then it is meteoric as far as the, the feeling of well-being is concerned because you realize all the stuff you have doesn't have to be there. Well, that must be some great relief for your clients who achieve this level of openness and uh, flexibility in their lives, I would imagine. I mean, I'm thinking about it now. Wow, I have some things I want to deal with I haven't dealt with for a while. Uh, yes, listeners, I am human. And I thought, well, this might be a good idea to deal with it via hypnosis or hypnotherapy uh, as opposed to cognitive therapy, which I don't... As, as you can guess through the previous part of our conversation here, I just, I just think it's, for me, it would be a waste of time. I know how I operate, but, you know, I, I would get somebody to agree with me or I would agree with them, but there would be no shift. And that's what I would be looking for. And I hope our audience would be looking for that as well, just a shift to make that kind of a change in their lives that they do need help. But Let's just go to the next, another level, not the next one, because this one just might be on the same. What if people cannot afford, some people don't have the money and don't want to commit the time and the resources to go to a hypnotherapist? Say we're dealing with somebody who's living in the uh, Outer Banks of Alaska and they're working remotely and they don't know anybody and what, do, you, do you work uh, remotely yourself? Do you, can you do this hypnosis over the phone or over the internet? Okay, well, there, there were sort of three parts to the question. So Probably. I tend <laughs> to go on. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, first of all, the, the commitment is absolutely key. If a person is not committed to making the change, whatever the change is, if they don't want it and they're not willing to commit to themselves, it's not a commitment to me or the practitioner. It's a commitment to themselves because they want a better life. If that's missing, I say don't bother because you're wasting your time, your money, and my time and my money. Uh, the second part of the answer is that I can only speak for myself, but I would say that many, many practitioners work on what's called a sliding scale fee structure. For instance, my standard fees are not inexpensive. But if I'm working with someone that has a true financial challenge, then 
I always am willing to discuss working with them for a lower fee uh, because I'm here to help people change their lives. I, of course, I have to make a living and I like money as much as anybody, but that's not why I do what I do and that's not what gets me out of bed into the office every day. So if you're truly committed, I'll find a way to work with you. Now, the only exception to that, and again, I'm only speaking for myself, is cigarette smokers or vapors or tobacco users, whether they're smokeless or smokers, because they're spending thousands of dollars a year on this deadly habit, they never get a discount. I no. tell them, yeah. Use your smoking money to pay my fee and then you, and then keep saving it. And you'll have thousands of dollars after a year or so. And most smokers are spending two or three grand a year. The third part is, yes, I do personally work remotely. I've got clients literally all over the world, all over the United States, as far south as South America, as far west as Asia, as far east as um, uh, I just finished working with a gal in London. And so many, many, many of the issues that hold us back in life are what we call the worried well issues of the world. And they lend themselves beautifully to this particular uh, practice. And there are other tools beside hypnosis that also work at a subconscious level, like neuro-linguistic programming. But yes, you can work remotely. And there are times when I'll, I'll speak with someone who will reach out from far away and I'll say, you know what? This is not something that I feel can be done effectively remotely, but let me help you find someone in your area that you can work with personally. So uh, long, three long answers to one, you know, sort of tripartite question. But yeah, if you're not committed, forget it. There's no magic here. And I get a lot of people that want the magic wand, tap me on the head, put me in a little trance, and then I'm going to be different. You know, everybody in our culture today, instant gratification, give me my stuff, give me my happiness. I want it now. It doesn't work that way. I totally understand and agree with you. Nothing, people have to do the work. That's my bottom line. You know, as I said once about three weeks ago, God gives you the gift, but you have to do the work with it. You know, you, whatever it is, people have to do the work. And if they're not committed, why would you bother? Precisely. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to do the work. They just want their stuff, whatever their stuff is, including feeling really good about themselves. And I, always, I remind them, it's, you know, you didn't get here overnight. It took you years to get programmed this way. It's not sure. going to take you years to get unprogrammed. It's only going to take you weeks. And, and it's amazing how quickly it can happen. Right. The, people commit, the change feels magical and it looks magical. And that's part of the joy of doing what I do because within a few weeks, I'm seeing somebody that has completely changed their outlook on life and is making much better choices for themselves. But they, can, they decided they were worth it. And that's, that's where you have to start. Yeah, value and worth of self is vital. So what other ways can we get around that resistance, the, our listeners? What else can they do besides call you or they could read your book? Does, this, does the book have insights uh, as to what we're talking about right now, the synthesis effect? Oh, absolutely. The whole process of synthesis was designed to help Western thinkers, and when I say Western thinkers, that's modern Western culture, which generally is modern technology-driven culture, which is most of the world today. It's designed to, from page one to the end of the book, to teach people how to do this process on their own. Um, and, and every chapter has action items, and then every chapter introduces the next step in the process, so that by the time you're finished, um, you're working both at a cognitive, logical level, which we are used to and more comfortable with, but we start helping you get in touch with the more powerful and more subtle subconscious spiritual part of the mind. So there's meditative practices in there. Meditation and hypnosis are incredibly great complements to one another for creating change in your life. You can learn self-hypnosis. It's a little more challenging. It's a little easier with someone that's trained and knows how to do it and knows how to use it. But that's what the synthesis effect is all about. Using this process in a step-by-step -step manner and reading the stories of other real people along the way. The people I work with are just like you and me. They're everyday people that just wanted to live better. And I share a whole, lots of lots of stories in the book so that it's fun to read and it's hopefully motivating. And by the time you're at the end of it, you're doing the process. And I've had thousands of people over the years now, the book's been out for a little while, write and say, you know what? I changed my life. Uh, thank you very much. So yeah, that's what, it's, that's what it was designed to do. 
Well, there we go, people. The title of John McGrail's book is The Synthesis Effect, Your Direct Path to Personal Power and Transformation, published by Career Press, and I'm sure, it I'm sure it's accessible on drjohnmcgrail.com. Is that correct? Oh, it certainly is, as well as Amazon and barnesandnoble.com. So, yeah, you can go to the website. There's a direct link to the Amazon page. There we go, people. You know, you've just heard that Dr. John McGrail's website address is Dr. John McGrail, M C G R A I L dot com or hypnotherapy los angeles dot com for those of you that are local. And I will uh of course show all the various social media links uh on the Dr. John McGrail page on my website. So what can you give us to t what can you give us as a takeaway right now that people can do right now a, a tip a tool a strategy that they can uh use right now you know they're thinking they don't know what they want to do they're thinking of calling you they're thinking of checking up on hypnotherapy on Google they're going through all of these phases but what can they do for themselves right now Well I'll give you a very very simple exercise and I would recommend that if anybody decides to try this, you give yourself, commit to at least a week of it. But once or twice a day, find some time where you can sit. No distractions or disturbances. Turn off the phone, get away from the computer, kick the cat out of the room. Give yourself some quiet time, just you. Sit in a very relaxed position. I say 21 slow, deep, gentle breaths all through your nose and take your time and breathe out i recommend through your nose just as slowly and you do that okay you're cutting out i don't one to zero can you if hear you me lose count oh. oh no i can where oh. where did i start cutting out joanne when you started giving me the commitment to one time or one to two times a day so why don't you just start there i will note the time and then i can have the um audio editor delete the other stuff because you cut out like a couple of times during this paragraph oh no okay so just start yeah. from the first part sure at least once or twice a day find a space where you, you can sit quietly without distraction Turn off your phone, turn off the computer, kick the cat out of the room. Just a little quiet. Close your eyes and let them relax completely. Let your whole body relax. Completely. And then simply take 21 slow, deep, gentle breaths. Breathe all the way in through your nose. Take your time. Breathe out just as slowly. And I recommend through the nose because it makes it easier to breathe out just as slowly. 21 of those breaths. Beautiful, slow, deep breaths. Count down from 21 to zero. If you lose count, start over. That's the hard part. But And don't get mad or frustrated. It's part of the process. And then after you get through 21 breaths, just picture yourself, imagine yourself, or just think about how you would feel if you transcended and got over one major issue that's holding you back, making more money, having more self-confidence, whatever it is, and just feel it. And when you feel the light, sit with it for a minute or two, and then you're done. Do that once or twice a day. Give yourself a week. It's going to take seven days for you to start feeling it. You will feel much, much better at the end of seven days. Are you worth 10 minutes a day? I hope so. There you go, people. I would strongly suggest that whoever's listening to this uh, podcast, repeat the podcast. Start from the beginning because I'm sure you missed some great tips from Dr. John McGrail and some insights into how our subconscious doesn't always work for us unless it's retrained. And that's what we're looking at today. And you can reach Dr. John McGrail at drjohnmcgrail at gmail.com or his best website address is drjohnmcgrail.com or hypnotherapylosangeles.com. And I'm very grateful that you're here with us today, John. And I look forward to our audience being very happy with your information. Well, again, thank you so very much for the invitation. Uh, it's a delight to, to be able to reach more people and you're doing a, an incredible service with this show. I, I thank you so very much. You've been very generous. Thank you as well. Okay, everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.
I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. Please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com to listen to more podcasts and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Work-Life Balance. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.